Good morning and good afternoon. Welcome to this week's edition of the Digital Shop Talk Radio. I'm Tom Dorsey, and today I've got Levon Arnold with me from Long Arm Mechanics in Garden City, Idaho. And we're going to be talking about unleashing the full power of the digital shop, and in a big way, and in a big surprising way also, because not to steal this guy's thunder, but his entire staff is out with COVID uh, and has been since last week. And so he's been a one-man army and maintaining his numbers, maintaining his best practice uh, KPI uh, numbers. No excuses. And of course, welcome Levon Arnold. I appreciate you coming on, buddy. It's going to be a great show. I'm really excited to be here. Excited. Uh, always, always look forward to listening to the podcast. Um, so I'm uh, looking forward to going through some things with you. Yeah, thank you. And couldn't be, uh, you know, couldn't be more happy to have you on. And of course, as always, Uwe Kleinschmidt, our founder and CIO. Welcome, Uva. I'm so excited to to be here. I, I, I'm really looking forward to what Levon is going to share with us. Yeah. Yeah, because, you know, and we didn't plan this. It's not like I went and like, you know, sprinkled some COVID dust around so we could have a show where <laughs> a guy is holding it down by himself. And, uh, you know, it hasn't been devastating. And I'm not going to, you know, put any words in Levon's mouth. Levon, if you could just kind of give us a background on what happened, where where you've been, and how are you managing to uh, to hang in there, buddy? I think um... – I think it was about it was almost two weeks ago that uh what my my lead technician he you know he started feeling sick you know we sent him home and um we got tests for everybody and all three of my technicians and my entire front office staff tested positive myself my uh marketing gal ayano and my detail manager we also were in a detailing shop um out of the second building on the property they we all tested negative um you know, thankfully we're able to keep the, the boat afloat. And, um, I think that the biggest thing that's been, uh, that's allowed us to get through and with, uh, only a small hit on our numbers is really falling back on the processes and procedures that we, um, that we have in place, working through every single workflow step and communicating with customers. That's just been, you know, everybody's been pretty understanding. Um, rescheduling and accommodating for longer delay times but the extra hours that i've had to put in and falling back on the process is second nature boom 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 has just allowed us to you know really pull through this so i'm 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 fortunate that i wasn't positive but i'm fortunate that i have that second nature uh, over the last few years of running the digital shop that i've been able to fall back on it and not have to um not have to work through everything critically and just second nature it, you know? Yeah. And I mean, Uwe, I mean, that's gotta be, you know, I mean, cause that's what we hammer this process about. That's what the DSOP is all about. You gotta have right. a plan in place. You gotta build that muscle memory because guess what, when this kind of stuff happens, boom, you just hit that turbo button, you know, and it, and it, and it just becomes natural and you can keep your best practices. You don't have to cut the corners. Right. Um, Uwe, you got any uh, any insights on? I mean, how incredible is this? Well, I'm I'm blown away, but I would love to hear a few details if if you don't mind. Um, what have you learned in the last week? I mean, what what really? Where did you pat yourself on the back and say, "Wow, that was good that we had that in place"? And what else did you learn which might make you change stuff around? <clears throat> I think one of the biggest things has been uh, making sure that, that uh, I'm taking care of myself, you know, I'm coming in and not uh, burning myself out. But um, I've learned that, you know, once once somebody, you know, me in this case, has really reached that um, that level of mastery of knowing what needs to happen on every single workflow step and what needs to wait until the next one or needs to be there to answer the customer's questions before they ask them, which I think is the biggest, the biggest benefit with the digital process. We can get those things. So being able to fall back on those things, the biggest thing that I've learned is working through those workflow steps and getting those answers there um, ahead of time. You know, it cuts my time in half more than in half running the front office by myself 
and has allowed me to step back into the shop, which traditionally um, I don't spend my time in the shop. You know, I have three technicians out here and um, I, you know, I, I steer the ship basically. So being able to reach that level of mastery has been the biggest thing, but um, seeing what that can achieve, I think this week has really, um, really uh, set a, set a, set a cornerstone of how we work through this and where we need to work towards getting all of my team up to speed and on that level, same level of mastery so they can run with me basically. So, so would you recommend for the audience that, uh, you know, they send everybody home for a week so that they can uh, uh, work through their processes and make them bulletproof? Uh, you know, it's definitely been uh, an immersive process and um, I, I won't say uh, do that willingly, but uh it has helped. It has helped. It has, it has allowed me to really embrace and understand how effective all of this implementation can be. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, and I, I was just kind of half joking when I'm saying, send your staff home. That's what the audit is all about folks. Is it when you work that audit process, especially when you make it a regular part of your management, right? Um, doesn't have to be every day, but quarterly, monthly, whenever it is, and you're going to audit and you're going to go through, you're going to put yourself in those shoes and you're going to do the stuff. You're going to push the buttons. You're going to, you know, move that RO forward. You're going to make the phone call, whatever it is. And you have to, you know, you have to be the devil's advocate uh, on your process because that's how you find the holes. And then when you get into a situation like Levon, unfortunately found himself in, guess what? you're victorious, you succeed because you've trial by fire, you know, you've worked out all those kinks and you can trust it. And if you can trust it, you can just crank the throttle and pour it on. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that's a great point. Being able to fall back on it, being able to rely on it. Yeah. You know, I, I hope nobody else has to find out the way that I've found out, but um, you know, once, once you're in that position, you know, that's when the, the rubber hits the road, I guess. Bill Connors asking Levon, is this a plan that you had in place in court in case something like this happened? Um, and you know, cross training hit by the bus plan is is what he, he pretty much called it. I think the I think the biggest challenge has been you know getting something documented and this is how we'll handle this this and this with the COVID pandemic. You know that's been impossible because we've had week by week changes. So. We've had a very general outline on what happens um, in a worst case scenario like this. And luckily, if, uh, if it was anybody else, I don't know if they've been able to work through it as sufficiently as me, but I know that most of my team would be able to work through it um, at, least, at, least, uh, at least be able to weather the storm, yeah. um, you know, so... Yeah. And, and, you know, and I, the other upside I see to it really is that, you know, it takes a lot of excuses out. If you're able to maintain, I mean, I was looking at your metrics, right? Your, your motorist research time is actually trending up. You know, you're, you're actually beating the text and the writers in some metric areas. And so that kind of really says, Hey, you know what? I didn't have anybody else helping me. And I was able to get those inspections audited. I was a, or edited. I was able to get them out the door. I was able to let the process work and, and keep the sales rate up. Um, what's your excuse, <laughs> you know, and it really kind of shuts the door on any of that. Uh, and I think it would help you really, you know, if you had anybody who, and for folks in the audience, you know, if you have anybody who's not hundred percent on board, I mean, that's a real strong position to get somebody to reconsider, you know, you know, if they're dragging their feet. Right. Yeah. I think, I think that's, I think that's a great point. You know, it's um, you either want to rely upon the excuses that present themselves or want to be bigger than the circumstances. And I think that that's the mentality that we try and cultivate, uh, or at least I try and lead with. Um, most of my team is pretty, uh, two of my technicians and my front office staff are pretty new. So we're still going through that mastery process. Um, but I think that they're picking up that uh, we're, we make the choice to be bigger than the circumstances mentality. 
Um, we'll see. We'll see what they say when they come back and my, uh, how strong our numbers are. I think that'll be a good motivation, though. I mean, it's great. You set the bar, right? It'd be amazing. Yeah, set the bar. Especially if you keep ahead of them for a period, you know, uh, uh, and they have to chase you. I mean, that's you know, you kind of cement your leadership as well, right there. Not that you know you haven't, but but for yeah. other folks, you know, that are out there and are because we get it all the time. You know, oh, my text, I really don't want to do this, and gee, and you know, it's like who's running the asylum over there, you know, and. And something like this, I got to tell you, Levon, is given a lot of, you know, uh, I think faith and, and, you know, we're proudful people. And it's like, hey, man, if this guy can do it, what's my excuse? You know, I better get out of bed and tighten my boots. <laughs> yeah, a little friendly competition uh, amongst everybody is, is, is always OK, I think. Um, but leading by example is more important in implementing this process uh, than anything. You know, everybody has to be on board. Say what you want about the trickle down theory, but. Uh, it's a trickle down economic theory, but what really cultures, what really trickles down is the culture from the top. And if we can lead by example, then, um, you know, the team will get on board. You know, we will be able to overcome those obstacles and uh, get the numbers where we need them to be and stuff like that. Yeah, no, that's, that's, I mean, it's unfortunate that, you know, you have to kind of go about it this way. You, you know, you don't control the die that was cast, but um man, what a great response, you know, and just, just congratulations, first of all. Uh, yeah. And, you know, uh, I really want to, I, you know, I'm already thinking about bringing you back, you know, a couple months down the road when you get back to full crew and then just do some comparative analysis and see how this experience, how you've grown out of it. You know, a lot of folks have done that, right? We saw them April and it was so devastating. And then, you, you know, you can really see the ones who committed just, you know, what is it? What do they call that V-shaped recovery? It's like a rocket ship recovery, right? And a lot of folks are ended up the season, you know, the summer ahead of where they were significantly last year. Uh, and that's that's a testament to really, you know, having a plan, working the plan and just not, you know, just not giving up, right? Just, uh, just, just doing it, you know, swing for the fences. Yeah, go, just go for it. There's a lot of fortitude that's involved with it, but you know, shop owners know plenty about that. It's just applying it in a in a in a to a different different processes. You know, Levan, would you mind um, telling us a little bit about you and your shop? You know, how big is it? How did you become a shop owner? Yeah, so we, yeah. Um, you know, so we. You know, in a couple of days, we're going to be reaching our five-year anniversary in this shop. We've been in business for about nine years, but commercially, uh, five years, I got into the commercial space and everything like that. And, um, you know, have, I, uniquely, I've always wanted to be a shop owner. Um, eight years old, I was talking about it um, and been planning for it. And, you know, I, I love what I do. I love working with people. I think that's one of our biggest advantages and in, in new customer acquisition, you know, that's where I take the lead really um, is really how I work with people. But, you know, the digital stuff has, we had so many manual processes in place before we jumped on board with auto vitals that I look back at it and I'm just like, Oh my gosh, no wonder it was so cumbersome and hard to get everybody to follow it. There was a million more steps than we have. And, it's really allowed me to really create the shop that I want leading, trying to lead the industry and in, um, the changes that are coming. You know, I can't see uh, successful shops running without um, managing workflow steps as scientifically as we can now. And, and, you know, all of it has allowed me to really do a lot of work with my community. That's what I like to do as a business owner is get out and see who I can help and how I can help outside of the shop for others benefits um, primarily and how that helps with the shop is you know the secondary uh, mentality I guess that I have when I'm out there but um, you know the digital shop being able to look at every car that's in the shop knowing where every workflow step is from my tablet when I'm out in a meeting um, up the street and being able to have my service advisors just send me an estimate before we send it to the customer, make sure all these little things are buttoned up while I'm getting them up to speed and stuff like that has, you know, the, the, the lifestyle it's been able to create for me has, uh, you know, I'd say it was probably five years earlier than I expected uh, to be in some of the positions that I'm in. So, you know, I think, I think I just have a lot of enthusiasm. I like 
solving challenges more than anything, um, overcoming obstacles and stuff like that. So um, I'm pretty happy with where we've gone coming into our five year anniversary. We're hitting a really good milestone. Our numbers are on a great trajectory and we're building a really good team. So, um, you know, I think that uh, I'm happy with the progress that we've made. And I think that this, the last week, week and a half is uh, like, like you said, Tom, you know, reinforcing and cementing in um, our position, our processes, our procedures, and how well they uh, deliver our customer experience has, um, has been tremendous. I'm, I, you know, I can't be happier with where we're at that way, you know. That's fantastic. Uva, I bet you never thought you built a time machine. Yeah, yes. No, it, it's super rewarding to hear that, right? Um, See that smile on your face, buddy. And uh, so is there a second location in the making? You know, I, we've been working on um, getting our numbers up so we can get uh, commercial real estate. Um, it's, man, it's expensive right now. And in, in my area, Garden City has been going through a lot of uh, gentrification process. Commercial real estate's been through the roof. I missed an opportunity. Um, I won't name names on why I missed that opportunity, but uh, to buy the building that I'm in. But I found that this last year, our um, our capacity at this shop, we have a four, four lift shop. We have two detail bays. We really max out in the busy, in the busy season. And we miss a lot of calls and customers being able to get them in because our lead time was so far out this last season that I think a bigger shop to start and then maybe a second shop after that is probably is what I'm eyeing. So it's, yeah, that's exciting. Cool. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if you saw, you know, we did the episode with Mike Button. I've had him on a few times. He's up in Chico and, you know, he's doing that same type of concept where he basically just put together a production facility. You know, it's not really a retail location. It's a tilt up. It's just out of the way, whatever, it does, you know, location doesn't matter. And he's just moving vehicles back and forth from his other locations over there for production, you know. So, um, you know, for folks that are, are hurting for space or looking for ideas like that, uh, you know, check out that episode. I, I don't, off the top of my head, I don't remember what episode number, but it was with Mike Button. It was a great show. Um, you know, solving problems, that's what we do. Yeah, I, I like that concept too, you know, being able to have one production facility um, and ramping up and ramping down and, and being able to funnel into that is, I think that's going to be huge for maintaining solid employees, which we all know is a really big challenge with the technician shortage and um, maintaining consistent workflow. You know, you can ramp up and add a split shift if you wanted to, if that production facility is really maxing out like you want it to be. Yeah, There's so many possibilities that way. Exactly. And if you've got several retail facilities, then, you know, you're able to actually shuffle people around. You're short-staffed over here today. Well, boom, there you go. You know, so you got that deep bench also. And, you know, it's funny. I mean, we we're taking it to the next level, you know, saying you could have your, your front counter could be in a mall right you could yeah. you know you could be in a mall and then you just drop the keys and boom there you know like I, i'm just gonna flatbed it over to and drop it back off or whatever it is you know there's so many options that way uh it really kind of you know takes the restrictions out and you know we've had other uh episodes we're talking about from a recruiting perspective and the ability for inside of a digital shop you're almost not even bound uh by you know demographics or geography even in the employee level right you got a service advisor working virtually you know uh um so so this is yeah i mean this is right really why i wanted to get you on and, and just have kind of this discussion and if anybody wants to participate you know uh chat in your questions chat in your comments you know if they're vulgar and negative like like uh you know bill's been doing here towards me you know keep that stuff to yourself really highly unnecessary um, but no, seriously, uh, get them in here and we'll talk it out. Um, Uva, so, so let me think, you know, um, I know we were talking before the show because, you know, uh, leave on with you, you know, you're kind of going through your winter time is seasonal for you, I would imagine. Right. And so yeah. you're probably ramping up for winter right now, uh, or you're concerned about it. You got to get the crew back in first. Um, um, you know, through like what you're saying, the gentrification, you're really in a kind of a hip 
uh, area. I was checking it out, Garden City. It looks really cool. And I'm looking at your web page and it's looking like you prefer working on euros. Is that just because that's the folks that are around you or, uh, you know, you got, you, you prefer working on euros? Well, I like the, I like the demographics. I like the demographics. Generally what I see with, uh, people with European, um, manufacturers, they want to keep the car going. And my biggest thing is my biggest dem target demographic is, you know, customers that want to keep their car in good shape. You know, that's why we started the detailing shop. Um, you know, customers that polish their vehicles up are either really want to keep, keep their resale value and keep their car in great shape or, you know, there's the other half of them that want to polish them up and don't want to fix the coolant leak, but you yeah. know, that's okay too. I'm not going to, I'm not going to argue with them either. Um, the bills. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. But you know, my biggest focus and the type of shop that I want to, the experience I want to offer is we are your partners in making sure your car is in as good of shape as you are willing to keep it in. Um, there's nothing that we can't do here to maintain the car in brand new condition almost. Um, and that really just comes down to having the conversation on what are your expectations for your vehicle and how long do you want to keep it? And let's yeah. make sure it's going safely and reliably and looking nice um, for as long as we can. So that, yeah, that, that's, that, that's who we want to be. So. That is such a critical first question, right? Or discovery uh, when, when you're, especially when you're meeting a new customer or somebody comes, Hey, I just got this car, whether it's used or new, right? What's your plan with it? How long? And, and, you know, that's where it really, I think the digital inspection becomes so critical to that conversation is because now you have that full transparency. So if your goal is five years or, or whatever, or a lifetime, Hey, there's nothing better that's going to keep you informed on the success of that and the value that you provide them to meet that goal. Yeah, that's that. That's that's a hundred percent it. You know, once we send them that, uh, once we send them that that digital vehicle inspection, they have such a clear idea on where they're at with everything. We always go through. Hey, you know, if you have service records, I'll put a note in there so we know and we're not overselling. But you will be able to know where you're at if you go somewhere else, which you know a lot of customers do. We're not the cheapest shop in Garden City, um, nor do I want to be. Yeah. Um, but um, they go somewhere else and they don't feel the value in the experience and the partnership that they do when they're here. You know, you can't, you can't uh, run through the old paper carbon copy process and compare it to a digital vehicle inspection. On average, we're over 50 pictures per, per inspection. Um, last time I checked, you can't compare those two things on the same scale. That it's a completely different ball ballpark. Um, and, you know, it's nice after five years, you know, we're really getting the recognition and the word of mouth that that's the type of shop that we are. And it can't be argued through the pictures and the transparency and the honesty that mm -hmm. is just inherent with it. Um, it's just, it's just an amazing thing, you know. And I know that we have never, Never in five years have we put any serious money into advertising. I'd say we were less than a thousand dollars a year um, in the five years that I've been in this in this shop, and that's that's really solely focusing on the customer experience going through it, and first and foremost, making sure we're, how they're seeing us and experiencing us experience, experiencing us through those inspections. And those questions that they're going to ask that we're going to answer before they ask yes. um, has been that, that, that driver in word of mouth and clarity and education. And, you know, there's, I don't know, there's any other way to do it, you know? Yeah. You know, that's, it's brilliant. Right. Uh, and right away that pops in my head is ATI super conference, the swimming pool sales guy, right? We had this uh, one year out there, we had this, um, keynote speaker and it was amazing what does he say he says i put up this website there's all kinds of swimming pool builders that are competing against me i start giving my opinion uh, instead of hiding from the competition i start telling you about the competition and in some cases and, and that's where you know he was kind of blogging through there and in some cases he's saying hey you know what this guy my competitor probably is a better deal for you uh for whatever reason 
boy, he said it was like opening the floodgates, the authority, the respect, the online um, um, kind of, uh, yeah, uh, credibility just put him at a completely different level after that. And, and then it was just do more of it, right? And so that's really what I kind of want to, because I see a lot of that in how you look at the uh, your kind of your strategy for new customer acquisition online, right? Um, yeah. really like your, your, you know, open doors, you got the pit bull sitting there kind of thing. Uh, you know, if he's a pit or not or whatever, you know, he's part pit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, and then, like I said, and then you've got actual metrics, how many digital inspections you've done, how you handle your customers, your community involvement. It really, you know, I, I loved it from a customer experience perspective. It drew me into who you are. The only thing I would recommend is, you know, you got to kind of some smiling faces and, and, you know, welcoming him in on that first picture and see you uh, there also. But, but I mean, that's, that's really nitpicking. How has it been working since you've kind of taken that approach and you're, and you're putting that transparency out there? I mean, I guess the proof's in the pudding. If you're only spending about a grand a year in any other, uh, you know, ancillary marketing, it's working. Yeah. yeah it, you know, since, since, you know, I really, it all is all driven by, the number of inspection pictures that we take is just pure gold content that we can put online. We're already taking the pictures. Let's, uh, so I brought in somebody to do the marketing um, in-house. She builds the websites and we can just chip away at that. I like, you know, like I said, I like solving challenges. So what little thing can we do to improve this, that, or the other? But, um, you know, after the pandemic uh, led up this year, it was like uh, floodgates were open. Uh, like you said earlier, uh, customers wanted some kind of peace of mind and getting that through their vehicles and knowing that their vehicles are going to be safe and having that online presence to back that up. We were just primed to have, uh, you know, increase our sales month over month over month right after that this year, as they have been over the years, but it was just uh, floodgates this year. And um I love being able to communicate the personalized service with the rotation of pictures and updating of numbers constantly and um, all of those things, keep it, keeping us top of mind. Um, you know, I don't, uh, I can't foresee me ever wanting to really put a lot of that money into advertising, knowing that we're maxing ourselves out this way. And that's a great position. All we have to worry about now is, you know, making sure we're getting the cars through the shop effectively and improving our processes and procedures as we go. So, you know, it's been a tremendous, uh, tremendous tool being able to collaborate the inspections and pictures and everything that we communicate there and, and finding ways to communicate that to our customers before they come in, as well as after they come in, making sure those things are all in symmetry and everything like that. Yeah. And it's really about keeping it fresh. Right. And so how, so, so I'm, I get, you know, because you kind of hit the nail on the head, you update those pictures, you add this additional content as things happen. And, 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 and it's not just always sales oriented. A lot of it is, you know, human interest and, you know, your story and things like that and um, light, right. Uh, about how, and you said you have a, a person helping you with marketing, but how many hours would you say leave on a typical week? Do you invest in um, either reviewing the plan, looking at the metrics or physically going up and maybe making blog posts or, or, or posting content? And, and also uh, if you could talk to us a little bit about how you're managing the socials as well. Right. Right. Um, so, uh, so the social, you know, we kind of have a uh, target on, you know, how many posts we want to hit for categories in education, technical and sales and, you know, fluff posts and stuff like that. We'll have a one hour meeting, probably more than that. Um, probably a four hour meeting once a month, maybe. Um, and with every one of my employees, I hit, um, I hit them with a half an hour, um, half an hour, one-on-one -on -one meeting with them. With Aon on my marketing gal, I probably do that twice a week. But I think that um, I think that I invest a little bit more into that because marketing is somewhere that I like to spend my time as an owner. You know, there I don't try. I try not to jump into the daily the daily stuff um, and you know let my team you know go through their process and develop what the confidence they need. 
Um, but uh, I, I think I just like jumping into marketing and like reach, finding ways to reach out and talk to people and stuff like that. But I wouldn't say I'd spend more than six hours, maybe probably on average four hours a week on marketing, uh, not including my networking and stuff like that, out of the community stuff. Um, typically that takes a lot of my time, but going over the numbers and stuff like that, you know, I just joined ATI a couple of weeks ago. Um, so I spending, I've been spending a little bit more time going through the numbers, but I'd say I spent at least a couple hours every week, um, just going through the, uh, auto vital numbers and stuff like that at, um, every week. That's really where the juice is. Once you learn how, how many ways you can look at the numbers, you can learn how many ways you can improve yours. Um, and I, I like that. My, my, uh, my mom was an accountant or was a financial advisor and all of these in this whole financial world. So I was doing Excel spreadsheets when I was 16. Um, so that stuff comes a little bit more naturally to me, I think. Um, probably, probably stresses me out more going over the numbers and stuff like that. Uh, every week making sure, you know, these little adjustments we're making incremental adjustments we're making are, um, are there, but you know, I, I don't say that my, my, my time full time managing the shop is, uh, more than 20 hours a week, which gives me time to do the community stuff that I like to do. And then, you know, research other things that I'll, you know, because throw curveballs at my team for. So, yeah, because I'd really, you know, I'm really interested in how you kind of slice up your market, right? Um, you know, I think you're, you're kind of in a long, you know, along the river, uh, it looks like, um, yeah. and there's really, it looks like there's just national parks on the other side of you. So I would imagine you're not catching a lot of commuter traffic through there. And so, you know, I'm sure you have to take your demographic and kind of slice it up. Where, where's the work centers? Where's the, you know, where are all those euros living? Are they over yeah. here? You know, but what about the college kids that, you know, maybe the folks need the digital inspection emailed to them and where are they at? Um, talk to us a little bit about how you, you know, approach that and kind of how you slice it up. And do you apply a different kind of marketing strategy or technique uh, to those different slices? I'd say that I do, I, I do address them individually, you know, cause we are, like you said, we're in this long narrow corridor where there's one main thing, one main drag going across the, along, along the river here in garden city. Um, and it is a pretty busy one. It's one of the main roads going into downtown. Um, but where the shop's located, we're in between, I mean, like stones throw away from five zip codes. So you can't, you know, in, in the old world of advertising, you know, being centrally located in the middle of one zip code was always the most ideal thing because you can branch out or however that worked. Um, I don't know. In the digital world, that is super, it's just super advantageous, advantageous because I can reach out to each one of those zip codes. And Garden City, you know, your local area where you should be dominating as a shop is only only 20% of my total target market or total seg uh, customer segments. Boise itself in the wider area and all of the zip codes that encompass that is probably 75% of where the rest of my customers yeah. come from. So being able, I think our main strategy is probably just making sure that we have um, good SEO on all of those pictures that we're updating and the blog posts. This customer came from Eagle we make sure and put that in there. That's a neighboring town. Um, you know, this customer came from Boise over here and we put all that information on the back end and uh, make sure we specify all those long tail keywords that you, uh, you need to have and location tags and stuff like that. I think that's a big part of it, but you know, you're saying something about uh, college kids and stuff like that. And that's, that's been a big growing part of our, um, target market and i think with them you know they'll find you they'll go through the digital search yeah they'll look at the google reviews um and they'll really come in and find us if we have the right presence and we're focusing on the foundational things of if they're looking they're going to find us and hopefully they'll find us organically 
um, uh, with you know the low cost uh, investment there. That's I'll invest a lot more into the low and slow return of the organic results than I will, you know, that high value, that high dollar um, advertising advertising money. You know, it takes a little bit more time to ramp up, but once it's there, it's there, and uh, you can really fall back on it. Sure. Yeah, and it's a completely different message, right? You're, you know, hey, look, we can, we can, you know, get this inspection results, and, you know, directly to your parents. Uh, we have text to pay, so you know, <laughs> we can, we can text. You don't even have to have, have to ask them for the money. You know, what I mean, but seriously, these types of things are definitely more attractive to that subset than than let's say, oh, you know, your 15 years or your nine years in business and your, you know, shop of the year from nap. I mean, that's going to attract a whole other. Uh, you know, demographic of folks, you know, and yeah. you kind of have to find that balance and segment those by your zip codes. And I, Uba, I got to tell you, I mean, five zip codes in coming together at a point. I mean, mm -hmm. it used to be, that would be a nightmare from a yeah. local SEO perspective. Um, what do you got, Uva? So, so, and I know, you know, cause I know Uva's got kind of loaded up for, you know, we want to talk about some things that are changing, right? Because, um, you know, it's, it's, it's like one of those things when it comes to SEO, as soon as you think you got this uh, tiger tamed, oh my gosh, they unleash the lions, right? Um, and it's no different. There's some, some good, you know, Google changes coming down the road very soon. And rest assured, Auto Vitals is already on top of it. And already has a plan on how to differentiate and and serve the customers. But um, give us a little insight if we could. And then also, I want to get into the blog discussion also because I know that's another sure. uh, that's another good one that uh, that we'll probably finish the hour out on. Sure. I just want to give for the audience what you guys were just talking about a little visual, right? So this is the zip code. Yeah, I hope you can see my screen. Yes. Yeah, it's small, but we can see it. Okay, let me make it bigger the then. I see it full size. Right, and so this is the home zip code, and your shop is in the lower portion of it, right? And yeah, so that long talking... skinny part. Yeah, exactly. This one here. Yeah. And and so that's what you're gonna attract. You wanna attract, and yes, it's it used to be um, a challenge, and. Um, but it, but it's also, and so thank you, Tom, for the segue. What I really like to do, if you guys are okay with it, is take a ten thousand foot view first in what we believe, what I believe is going on, and what Google is telling us, um, and and show a few search results because, Levan, as you said, it's. It's mostly about education, and you use the term "long," you know, "tail" keywords, uh, which, for from an SEO perspective, is a nightmare because there are so many out there, and and um, it, it takes a while to to get a good presence up. It, it's actually a little worse, even, because what Google has done is to try, and that's location specific and keyword specific, to distinguish, to interpret what you want when you type in a keyword. And they call that the intention. What's your intention when you type in a keyword like tires, right? Or any keyword. And, and I wanna show you a few examples. Um, so, so here I just typed in tires, right? And so, um, and, and we're going to focus on desktop. The mobile world is a little different. And although it's the majority of the searches, it's just hard to show here uh, in the podcast. You can see that the intention is I want to buy tires here, right? When I say tires, right? right. I'm getting right. fire host with ads on the right hand side, which that's what I want to buy. By the way, tires is the most competitive keyword and the most searched keyword of all by far. Um, is that just in the automotive space or, or is that like- if No, no, I'm just talking automotive. Whatever, you know, for 
yeah, yeah. The, lawyer, the lawyer keywords. No, so, so th that's the uh, beauty of uh, uh, Google hiding their, they don't open their kimono about real numbers, but what you can do yourself very easily, you know, go to Google Trends. Yeah, sure. Right, and for example, type in, I don't know, Taylor Swift for the whole United States, and then compare that with auto repair, which is known to be a super high search volume. And look at this. Oh yeah, wow. This time And, <laughs> um, but back to the intention, right? There, there are three types of things, Google things you wanna do. You wanna buy stuff, you wanna educate yourself, or you want to know where stuff is, navigate, right? Mm. And, and, and so they know from the search keyword what the intention is because they track where you click, right? And then give you a different result depending on what they think you're looking for, right? So in this case, yeah. it's obviously you want to buy it, right? So you see tons of ads here on the right-hand side, um, discount tires of website and then places where you can buy tires, right? It's, I mean, it's very clear if I type in tires, I want to, I want to buy. That's what Google thinks I want to do, right? So, so that's the reason why it's super hard, uh, for example, to rank for tires, I I even in a local market. Now I did nothing else than adding the town, right? If you did that on Google, on the mobile phone, it, it, it might even show up without typing that, right? And see the ads are gone, right? And, and now it's, it's all about locations. And now Google thinks I wanna look for a, a shop selling and doing something with tires, right? As you can see. And, 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 and it's also interesting if you go here, there's another element down here, see people also ask, that's called the FAQ snippet, right? Mm. And, and it's all about buying, right? Whereas here, it doesn't even appear, right? Mm. So, so let's do the exact same thing with brake fluid. Again, right, I wanna buy ads about brake fluid and and down here things um about education see it's a little interesting now there's the there's the faq snippet showing up what happens if the brake fluid is low so both intentions are being served the, the need for education and the need for buying right, right. and if I do brake fluid near me, right? See how the FAQ snippet changes, the questions are different, right? So this is a more educational piece where here it's very clear I wanna buy, right? And it goes into different questions. And all I did is say near me, right? Um, alignment. They even show a dictionary for people <laughs> who, who are not sure what an alignment is, right? Clearly educational. Alignment near me, completely different, right? And so on and so forth, right? So what's the purpose of this showing uh, to you guys? The times where you can Google for yourself with keywords in incognito and determine that's how well your website ranks are over. Because there's no way that you can know what type of keywords the majority of the people rank uh, um, basically types in because you, you just Google for your for yourself what you think they're looking for. And, and as you can see, the change in what Google interprets what you type in, in the search result is so fundamental that 
it, it's not a way to assess how well a website ranks. And for everybody who is doing it, you know, it, it's a great exercise, it's fun, but it, you cannot conclude any, any numbers about whether your website, website ranks high or low. So, so what is now out there, which I can use, right? So Google has over time giving a lot of, I mean, you probably all know that there are companies who make money off of chasing Google, right? That's, I mean, that's all they do, SEO companies. They do nothing else than chasing Google and then some publish their findings. And, and so what Google has done is to help is to build something, a scoring system, which they call the Lighthouse score, right? That's one aspect that doesn't give you um, the in entirety of the information you want, but it's a, in an amazing way to start with. Here is one, right? The Lighthouse score has four sub aspects, performance, accessibility, best practices, SEO. What does it mean? Performance is really simple. How fast does a searching user get their hands on the information, mobile or desktop? That's performance. And you see down here what that means in detail. We can skip that. Um, but, but that shows you um, what Google spent a lot of time. Actually, I think that was an acquisition. Lighthouse was a, a third party tool and Google just acquired them. Accessibility go goes, uh, this is the ADA stuff, right? How well can anybody navigate on your website finding it, the buttons are not, you know, super close together. And if you, if you're visually impaired, you cannot see anything, right? That's the ADA stuff. Uh, best practice is how to build a website. So they look at your design, your layout, and does it follow generally accepted um, layouts? It's not a design, it's more the user experience. So if I click on here, what can I expect to see, right? And, and uh, where's the menu located? And so on and so forth. It has nothing to do with the visual design. It has everything to do. There are best practices of how to build a website. And last but not least, it's SEO, right? So, so Levan, if you don't mind, can I show the light host score of your website? Yeah, let's take a look at it. I'm super curious now. I think I've come across this before, but um, you know, who knows? You know, the the amount of uh, research you have to put into the digital world for this right. kind of stuff is right uh, <laughs> is is overwhelming. Yeah. No. Can you see it? Yeah, it's right down here. Okay. So your biggest challenge right now is performance. Right. So that's the ability, and, and, and again, Google starts using this as a ranking factor. So if, you, if, you, if your website is loading slowly, you, you have not only a ranking challenge, you also have a lot of bounces of people who it just doesn't load fast enough, right? So yeah, they're not, yeah, they're not gonna wanna wait. So, so if you, if it takes 14 seconds for the largest contentful paint, that means when it's fully rendered, right? Mm -hmm. The first contentful paint, which is the first thing you can see is five, 4.6 seconds. Okay, right? that's a long time actually, yeah. That is, especially on mobile, right? Yeah, in this, and, in this day and age at least. Yes, right. And, and so, um, and the SEO is, is 78. So, so that's not bad. So 92 is, is just awesome. 86, there's probably some minor things which can be done, but I think the 26 needs to be um, taken care of. Yeah, and, else probably. and for the SEO, it just means whatever you wanted to promote on your website, there are certain elements which um, which are missing or misleading, 
right? Yeah, and, I think that we have uh, real heavy keywords in ours and they cover a lot of ground. Like we'll have, we have a page for Asian auto repair and that right. covers Hondas and Toyotas and all those things. And segmenting those down is uh, probably a target area for that. Yeah, because then you'd almost have to do each of those makes and models by all those five zips that are around you too, right? Yeah. How do you work in all the location-based stuff into the, you know, different make and model or repairs? um that you're doing and also work in your detailing did so does your detail stuff have a different website that it's like a standalone brand we used to have a different website but it was too cumbersome to uh manage both because you know we're, we're, mm -hmm. we're using wordpress which is probably the biggest reason for that 26 but um yep. definitely uh outdated but you know the uh just getting um getting all those little details you know in line has been the biggest challenge for um, how do you segment for each zip code and each manufacturer and e each service yeah, you know that's right. the that's the challenge that we face on this digit on this digital part i'm actually pretty happy with our seo store cons seo store considering those challenges that we have in this right. industry yeah. right and at the end of the day you know what really matters is the phone's ringing Right. And so, so Uva, you know, uh, I mean, going to, so when, when, you know, as this content or, or excuse me, as the intention based uh, scoring becomes more and more weighted uh, I mean, it seems to me just looking at it from, you know, kind of the outside is the only way to compete is I have to have representation in all of those intentions. So, so, I mean, are you recommending or, or will we see in the future that we're actually, uh, like creating almost like a shopping cart or an online store uh, for our services, not just. Okay, so, yeah. So let's look into the futures a little bit. Auto repair shops have a little challenge and that's a self-made one, if I may say so, because there is language used, which is often focusing on the part which is being used to repair a problem, right? And so every part from an SEO perspective has immediately the intention of buying, oh, yeah. which you don't want to serve, right? The tires example, or the brake fluid example was, was uh, uh, perfect. So yeah. now we cannot just define today here, let's just change the language we use and educate, brainwash everybody to use different words. What we have to, we have to look at what's, what, what is the natural language in search. But I, I just mentioning that because that's a challenge. If you educate your customers about brake fluid and why that's needed or timing belt or things like that, right? So, so it's much better to use the words you actually do, right? When you are at the counter. You know, don't focus on the part, focus on what you do, the label. You do an alignment, you, right, right, right. That, that's, that's what you do. That's what you're in for. That's your value brought to them, to the market, right? And so I'm not saying on the parts in the SEO, but when and if you do try to, um, surround the content you create with the value you bring to the table right um i, I want to show how much time do we have i, I want to show you one of the most striking examples which i came across right which goes back to tires and um and let me see whether i can share that so, so let's just say the following tires is the most um the most competitive uh, uh, keyword, um, and and it invites to put become an e-commerce site to sell tires, right? Because that's that, that's what the commercial need is. Google identifies, and and so what we we, we had in, in in the past. Okay, let me share my screen again. In the past, always recommended, you know, just try to stay away from the e-commerce portion right? because 
it just turns your shop into a low margin e-commerce site competing with the tire racks and the Costco's and so on and so forth. But there's no chance of winning that, that, that battle, right? In the meanwhile, we say it a little bit differently. And I want to show you here a screenshot. I hope that you, you can see that. On the right hand side, you see a typical tire widget uh, you have available. This is called Tire Connect. And, and, and that is what you would have on your website. And then on the, on the left hand side, what we will do is we're going to link it back to actually the value the shop brings to the table. So before you start buying tires, that's just the shop figure out what's wrong and why your tires might look like this, right? Oh. Especially if you have uneven wear, then you can basically combine the two. You do the e-commerce, commerce, but you bring it back to the value the shop provides, which is let us figure out why your tires look like this and then fix the root cause so you don't have to buy the next set of tires in i don't know two months or whatever right and then and then so this way by using the the digital inspections as the lead you bring your value as a shop to the forefront and then the tire selling is it, just it, it's just a necessary thing to to provide the value Th does that make sense 100 percent. yeah that's pretty awesome actually and and, and so and that's true for anything going back to the question uh, about um, SEO. Let me just switch back to my... I mean, that's pretty bold, right? That's a bold move because, I mean, that's been since the beginning of time, uh, I guess tires have been a loss leader, basically, right? Is right. It, I mean, well, you're either a full-on tire shop and it's all you do and <laughs> we ain't doing an inspection. What for? We got, you know, a line of guys that want more tires um, or... You know, you're trying to uh, use that as a loss leader to get into the rest of the repair, but that, you know, through the widgets and I mean, most of that stuff supply is supplied by the tire distributors anyway, and they have no yeah. interest really in you being able to upsell. <laughs> they just care about you putting the rubber on. Um, right. That That's, uh, uh, do we have that in practice? Are we testing that? Are we, do we have data on that yet? No, good yet. question. Yeah. Uh, we don't we don't have it yet uh, and uh, statistically relevant to actually make a case but um it, it's a whole initiative we are we are going it's not just a web portion it's yeah. also integration with um third-party devices who allow a technician to measure for example you know a track depth in a consistent way so you can actually make that a retention tool, right? So your tread depth last time was X, this time it's Y. So the wear is going the following trend. We recommend to do this now or next time, well, right? Instead of, instead of relying on a tech being super precise last visit. And I mean, we all know digital inspection is great, but if you have growing breaks over the time of visits because the technicians it's different technicians measuring different values the equipment being integrated will solve that challenge and, and so that's a whole initiative we do to go back to your question uh, integrating with third-party equipment to get a precise tire measurement and and put things like what i just showed you um, on the website uh, uh, to bring the value a shop has for the motorist to the forefront and not run the risk of being perceived as a e-commerce or parts um, dealer. Well, and I really like that idea because I mean, if you can project, especially with with you know authority with accuracy, uh, you know, I know I'm going to need tires March fifth, right? <laughs> well, I could start paying right. for them right now, couldn't I? And if I'm paying for them and I just go through this and now I'm there on March 5th and then you tell me, well, you know, this alignment, this tie rod end, hey, you just paid off. You, you don't want to wreck them now. <laughs> I've kind of got a baked in upsell or a baked in, uh, you know, captive 
kind of uh, sale there because, hey, I don't want to spoil this thing that I just went through, you know, preparing for. Um, really, really interesting from a, from a customer service experience and a data perspective uh, to see this thing play out. Are, are we looking for uh, pilot shops yet? <laughs> uh, not yet, but How do soon. people help prove this? Yes. So we have our Turbo community and we have already quite a bit of uh, requests. We're happy to add you, Levon, if that's, if, if that's something of interest for you. Um, I, I, I know we are out of time. I just want to talk about the blog very quickly. Blogs yeah. are great to get content across. There's no doubt about it, especially your in involvement in the local community is, is just the perfect yeah. way to get this on a page. From an SEO perspective, it's, it's, it's tough, in my opinion. Yes, it there's is. rich yeah. content, there's rich content, but you need to have an SEO strategy for your site and every single thing you add might water down your strategy instead of supporting it, right? You have to be crystal clear what you want to, what you want to promote for. Yeah. Locations, services, makes, right? And, and so that turns a blog post into, um, so basically the person who is writing the blog post has to be absolutely aware of the SEO strategy, has to be absolutely yeah. aware how it's being implemented, how it's implemented on the site and support that strategy and not write stuff which waters it down, right? And that's right. really hard, really hard to do. So, so um, yeah, that's, that is what I want. Would you recommend, Uva, that if you're going to do that, you templateize it or something? So all your title tags, your H1s and all that. Because the other thing is, too, is if you're going to use that as a landing page for, let's say, an ad or something, then you also have to be concerned about call to actions and some other uh, critical mm -hmm. page factors, depending on how you plan on using that uh, blog post as well. Yeah, I, I personally think a blog post is great to talk about community and what's going on in the shop. and but not build the SEO strategy on the fact that there is a blog, right? Yeah, I, I would separate the two. One more time, you know, it is amazing. This it was, it's a, it's incredible. We're already over the hour. Um, I gotta have <laughs> you back on, Levon. If you got, you know, when once your crew recovers and you got more time, I really, buddy, I really appreciate you taking the time out too, especially under the circumstance you're on here for a whole hour with us like this. Um, but man, I, I got to tell you, it's a great show. And, you know, I know that, uh, this helps, it helps a lot of folks that are in the same boat, not, not, not of course with their whole staff missing. Um, but, um, I really want to have you back on so we can get a little bit deeper into some of those, uh, outlier strategies and how they're actually paying off for you and working for you, uh, and where we're going to go next. Um, and then of course, an update on, you know, uh, how that, uh, you know, how those metrics played out and, and the response when your crew comes back in uh, to the bar that you've set. Uh, just really impressive, man. Uh, Levon, I can't thank you enough, buddy. Yeah, I appreciate uh, asking me to be on here. I'm always, I'm always happy to uh, talk about uh, the things that we're doing and um, help promote the digital, the digital revolution. You know, it's, yeah. it's the way, the way of the future. So um any more that I can contribute, I'd be happy to. No, oh, that's great. Yeah. yeah well, thank you very much. Luck, buddy. Yeah. You know, continued success, all that good stuff. Hopefully your folks come back stronger and healthy and, you know, hungry. And, and, you know, I know that man, with the way your leadership is rolling, you know, it's just, there's big, you know, I, I I'm, I'm excited to hear the next, you know, success story. Uh, yeah. So, so we'll definitely be in touch and get a follow up on folks. If you didn't get your questions in, go ahead and post them up on Facebook. You know, I, I I've got a, I guess I have a secret episode for next Wednesday. I, I'm, I, I've got a guy who's a trailblazer. This guy is going to put Lewis and Clark to shame. Neil Armstrong, who's he, right? This guy is such a trailblazer. Uh, but I just don't know if he's going to be uh, available. And so uh, we'll be doing a, a, a plan B if he's not, and I'm not going to find out until Friday. So just put it this way. You do not want to miss next Wednesday. Stay tuned. 
uh, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. You know, until then, get out there and make some more money. Listen, you know, reach out and friend Levon, con connect with Levon through Facebook, however he is. He's now an ATI. If you're an ATI shop, you know, shake his hand, recruit him into your 20 group, whatever it is that y'all do. Uh, because uh, this guy is, you know, a firecracker. And um, I'm just, like I said, really excited to see, man, uh, what comes next with you. Um, Uva, as always, thank you very much. Great insights on the kind of what's coming and, you know, just yeah, a you. little bit of confidence in the market, I guess, to our customers to say, hey, look, at we are seeing what's coming around this corner. We are on it like supersonic. And, uh, you know, nothing really gets past this guy. He was probably doing some SEO strategies in the shower this morning uh, while he was washing what's left of his hair. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> oh man thank you very much appreciate you guys thank you everybody in the thank audience you. get on the facebook forum if you're not subscribed autovitals.com forward slash radio get subscribed so you get the notifications you don't miss this show especially since i'm still figuring out where to make the facebook live go uh if that's been your method of access uh, i apologize but i think i got i nailed it today uh until next wednesday we'll talk to you later thank you very much thank Thanks. you